Hey everybody, John Ray with Musing Wizard. And today we're gonna to be talking about how to take the physical ailments that are showing up in your body. It could be chapped lips, it could be burns on your hands or cuts, it could be a sprained ankle, it could be cancerous, it could be any physical ailment that manifests in your body. What we're gonna unpack is how do you determine what the spiritual and emotional root of that particular ailment is because in a world that is ruled by zeros and ones, which would be simulation theory, in a world that is ruled by consciousness, which would be some kind of a, a consciousness theory, and, and in a world where law of attraction is constantly giving us a data input as a feedback mechanism to help us fine tune our way towards optimal living, our body is one of the best feedback mechanisms. It's one of the fastest feedback mechanism to get to get good information from reality that can be temporarily uncomfortable because it is an ailment, but ultimately point to a much deeper level of clarity. So I've got Carl Brockman here. We're we're gonna ask him where all his aches and pains are to, are today, and and then identify what the emotional root is. Carl, how are we doing? <laughs> Oh, uh, I'm well, I'm well. I am excited for my uh, session with Dr. John Ray today to really understand the root cause of everything wrong in my life. Uh, in a more serious uh, fashion, look, yeah, finding the root cause of things has been something I've been very curious about for a long time. You know, I, I went into business because I was continually frustrated with uh, businesses and leaders seemingly making decisions that addressed symptoms and not really addressed the root cause of opportunity in a team and a business in a a market and uh this this again like naturopaths uh holistic practice all of these things really easy to put into a box of woo woo you know uh really easy to uh just sum up as hearsay and of course it'll work if you believe it but it's not reality it's not the science uh, so I, I'm, I'm quite ignorant myself and I'm excited to trust our vibration and, and see where this conversation goes because I don't have tons to bring to the table. But I guess where I would love to start from, from yourself, John, is how, how do you see uh, naturopath remedies? How do you see the relationship between our being and the, the ailments that seem to come to light? Uh, is there a direct relationship? Is it sometimes this, sometimes uh, a ladder. Uh, how do you sort of see the relationship between these things yourself, John? And how have you sort of come to that realization? Yeah, well, I think one of the things to tune into is just the wisdom of ages, right? So they around so many different health conditions there there's like these old adages or phrases that we have or, or maybe like old wives tales that that we have around certain things so so it's important to analyze language for for kind of these old phrases and and where did these phrases come they come from they they weren't just made up like, like these are things that at an intuitive or psychic level people before they even had the medical science you, you you know had identified that certain things happen so one that comes to mind right now is having cold feet so so cold feet is an ailment it means that that you, that you're not getting proper circulating supply to the feet could be that you have high blood pressure um and and that's why your extremities can't hands and, and feet are cold all the time so that would be the the medical diagnosis but what is cold feet at, at, at the emotional level when when somebody says oh i have cold feet it means that i'm unwilling to to make a decision there's some fork in the road that's happening and i can't decide which way i want to go um and and, and so we can extrapolate from that old adage that, oh, when when I have cold feet, one thing to analyze is, is there a fork? Is there a decision tree where I'm unwilling to take a hard stance on something, where, where I'm unwilling to choose what I know is right for me because I fear the outcomes? And, and and so cold feet as a physical manifestation of my feet actually being cold, my hands actually being cold, can be a signal to us that, huh, maybe there's something that I know I should choose that I'm not choosing right now. And, and, and so 
all physical manifestations can be a springboard of thought for us to diagnose ourselves psychologically and emotionally on where we might have some trapped or blocked energy. We can take this a lot of different routes and, and I could go through a bunch of different ailments and, and we could see see that kind of old, old wives adage thing play out um, you know, in a bunch of different ways. But there's actually a really great book. It's called The Complete Dictionary of Ailments and Diseases. This is written by a French doctor, um, Jacques Martel, and it is essentially a uh, index of all of the major ailments that someone might have in their body. And what Jacques Martel did at a, at both the scientific and, and intuitive level is he wrote out the emotional root causes of all of these different diseases. And so the first thing that happens when I sprain my ankle, when, when I get burns on my hands, like, like I did in, in, in New York when, while I was making a bunch of t-shirts, I always look up, what is the emotional root of, of that? Because my body is always going to be the first feedback loop of reality. It's the thing that I have closest control over. And, and, and so it is the tightest feedback loop I have to understand where I'm not living optimally in alignment with my highest visions and, and desires. So I'll pause there. Does that make sense? Does that open up a series of questions for, for you, Carl? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so very curious about the, the dictionary. I'm sure it could be cool just to pull out a couple of ailments and see the work that that uh, illustrious French uh, doctor did and <laughs> wrote in the book. But yeah, firstly, I'd love for you to expand a little bit more on that relationship between your burnt hands and yourself. You know, it's it's one thing to just burn your hand. You're playing with a, a t-shirt printer. I'm sure that burning hands, it might be a part of that journey. Tell me a little bit more about how you might gleam wisdom or insight from something as simple as just burning your hands. Yeah, well, you know, we we can go through this book and and read what the what Dr. Mar Martell has outlined as burns, but but typically, um, small scrapes or burns, things that that come from quote unquote accidents, are almost always because you're not being present, and and, and so it's a signal to to slow down. When I was in New York, things were moving ten thousand miles a, a minute. I, I hadn't planned, you know, some of the things as well as I would have liked. And, and so there were pockets of, of moments where I felt frustrated that I could have planned better. And, and at the same time, like me just trying to get up to speed with the moment and being like, it's going to be what it's going to be. And ultimately, everything worked out fine. But, you know, my... I, I kept hitting my hands against this hot plate that I was using to to make these t-shirts at, at one of the events. And, and mostly that was because I was spinning over the event. I, I, I had some anxiety that it wasn't going to go well. And, and, and because I didn't create the space because I didn't think I had time to, to feel through that anxiety, that anxiety was kind of just playing itself out in the moment. And, and then I was just completely ignoring the the fact that I was burning my hands be, be, because I just wanted the outcome that I wanted to happen, which is that everybody gets a, a piece of merchandise to walk home with and they can remember my my business from. And ultimately that happened. But, but the thing that I learned from it is that, of course, we can always carve out a pocket to feel through things to to align ourselves again with with the optimal vision and and it's funny like a, a lot of times the optimal vision for the most part will play itself out which it did at this event it was a phenomenal event it was, i i got everything and more that i wanted out of this event but i burned my hands and and so it's just a slight and it's not like they're bad burns it's like tiny little burns but it's just a slight reminder hey in the future you could build out better processes you could plan a little bit better and you could hold space for yourself in a better way that would allow the event to be even smoother next time. And so it's just a good reminder for reflection. When I got back to Texas, I could look at my hands and be like, okay, I need to really sit with what worked in this event, what, what didn't work, what could be better, and how can I carve 
in future events, which I know I'm going to do a, many of, how can I carve out the space and time for me to truly be present in the event? And so then that leads to a process of mapping out why well, I can have employees here. And this is what that would look like. And now that I've personally done all of the steps, I understand exactly what it needs to be. And I can train somebody to do it. And that frees me up to be able to float around the party rather than being there doing the actual work. And, and because I'm not trying to both be representing my business and pressing t-shirts, it will allow me to be more in flow and, and more present. So that that all came from from just looking at the burns on my hands and, and being like, well, let me reflect on this. Like, what does this represent? And so maybe here in a second, after we hear from you, Carl, we can look at what burns actually mean from from Jacques Martel's perspective. Yeah, I'd love, I'd love to get more insight into what Jacques... Jacques Martel uh, has to say, but yeah, really quickly, you know, I, I remember this quote, uh, one of my uh, peers shared this with me a couple of years ago and just, it rings to me, you know, he said that, well, how you, how you do anything is how you do everything. And uh, I, I, for one, can be quite clumsy. I can be, uh, I, I, I make silly mistakes. I kick my toe and I get angry at the world, you know, and uh, really simply to understand that it will, this, these, my little scrapes, my bruises, my knocks, my bumps are just a symptom of me not being in the present moment. And mm. to reflect, it is when I am thinking a million miles an hour or thinking ahead about the future or thinking about something that previously happened that takes me away from where I am right now, which then uh, means that I do make a silly mistake. I'm not conscious. I, so I cut myself as I'm emptying the dishwasher. I'm just doing these small things. And again, they they are all a symptom of me not being present, not being purposeful in that moment. Again, really interesting. It's it's really easy for me to think about those times and be like, oh, that's just unlucky. Oh man, that that cow shouldn't have been there to kick my toe. Or I just <laughs> grabbed that knife wrong, you know? And uh, but like you so beautifully put, yeah, it, it's a it's an opportunity to be more present and aware. Uh, what does Jacques have to say, Dr. Jacques? Yeah, so I'm going to start with burns, but then I also want to read the emotional root of accidents because they this could also be considered an accident. Like I I didn't mean to do this. Like it was a mistake. That's not what's supposed to happen when you're making these T-shirts. So. For burns, Jacques says, a burn from various sources, heat, cold, etc., causes lesion in the skin. Skin is the limit between the inside and the outside, the border between my inner world and the world around me. Something is burning me up inside, a deep pain, deeply repressed, gloomy, and violent emotions, anger, sorrow, despair, that I turn against myself in the form of guilt and self-punishment, burn. So what I like to do as I'm reading through this is reflect on what parts of this actually resonate with me for the time that that I experienced this same ailment, which was a burn. And, and, and so was I feeling violent in the moment? I wasn't feeling outwardly violent towards anyone, but I was feeling upset with myself, which is kind of a, a type of violent energy. Like I was beating myself up for not being better prepared, for not having hired an employee to do it for me. And of course, I had never done it before. I was putting the pieces together in the moment. And, and, and so I could have cut myself some slack be, because for, for having never done it before, it was wildly successful. But because I'm an OC, o, OCD perfectionist, I was beating myself up. And, and, and so I was directing some violent energy towards myself. So when you're directing something like towards yourself, well, reality is going to showcase in, in some way that, that you're doing that. And, and it's hard to be present with yourself and mad at yourself at the, at the same time. So I'll continue reading. A burn may involve several levels of the body, skin, soft tissues, body fluids, sometimes the bones. An emotional or mental burn manifests itself physically in a very strong and aggressive manner. I check the part of my body that has been burned. For the hands, it is probably because I feel very guilty of doing something related to a current situation and because I persist in stubbornly facing someone or a situation. So one of the things that I was grappling at this event was what I was going to charge for it be, because I was having an inner conflict between knowing what I needed to charge to be profitable and, and wanting the, the people to like me so that they would invite me back to future events. 
And so I ended up undercutting what I should have charged a little bit so that I would get invited back for, for future events. And then I immediately felt a certain level of guilt that I didn't stand strong for what I knew I could have charged. And, and so then o over the course of the night, I was able to have some conversations and, and negotiate something better for future events. But I could have probably done that for the same one. But because I wasn't felt through, I just kind of immediately went to the safe place, which is against everything that I usually teach. And, and and so that guilt that that I felt about not getting the full value for what I was doing, um, you know, played itself out in, in part of the manifestation loop. So then it goes on to say, the feet concern the future and the next direction of my actions. So why do feet concern the, the, the future? Be, because I want to put my best foot forward. I'm walking forward. I'm wh What do we do? We walk into the future. And so you can see how certain body parts lend themselves to us thinking about certain things. The feet are always representing a decision space that's facing forward. So I can remember a time when when I sprained my ankle really bad playing playing in a racquetball tournament um, to the point where I couldn't play racquetball for like three months. And one of the things that if accidents and injuries are almost always because we weren't present. And one of the things that I was really worried about at that particular point in time was rebalancing my crypto portfolio. And I couldn't stop thinking about how I was going to rebalance it be it because I knew the market was going to have a big shift. And so I wasn't being present in, in the game and, 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 I hadn't decided there, there were there were two options of how I could have balanced my my portfolio in that moment. And I hadn't decided. And when you come down and sprain your ankle, that's showing that you have split energy on a decision. And if you're not present, that energy is going to show up as a physical manifestation. And so ultimately, that's what happened. And and then I had to feel through all of my feelings about going in and, and doing stuff, knowing that I had I was spinning over something. Spinning over something mentally, spinning over a decision is always means that you're not in your body. You haven't brought the choice down into your body to feel the discomfort of it. What was the discomfort of balancing my portfolio? I'm going to lose all my money. I didn't want to think about that. And, and and so I wanted to figure out the solution before I had to feel the discomfort of what if I make the wrong choice and lose everything? Well, really, I should have just brought that immediately into my body. My body's way more efficient at, at processing that energy. And then I could have gone into my racquetball game present-minded, having already felt through that energy, and that energy wouldn't have had to manifest itself as a sprained ankle. So and really quickly, I, yeah. I just can't help but highlight how valuable it is for one to ask that question. You know, if you find yourself running around in circles or trying to solve a problem or, or feeling a little bit manic or putting a lot of weight on a decision, just to ask yourself, well, what am I truly afraid of? Or what am I truly concerned about here? You know, just a question to allow you to get a little bit deeper and whether it is just a little bit deeper intellectually or to feel through the actual concern, it, it, it can be so freeing and allow one to slow down and stop perpetuating the, the problem in their heads. And I, I just couldn't help but call that out because it's so valuable. That's right. And whatever the frequency of the problem is, that energy is going to pocket and and stagnate in certain organs of the body, so, so certain uh, and, and in the field around certain organs. So the next thing, thing that, that Jacques says here is, <clears throat> I may fear being introduced to a new person or situation because I am burning to know them. Maybe I fear that my projects will go up in smoke. I may also have a burning desire to find myself with a person I love. So here I'm at a, an event having a little bit of anxiety about like all of these super high profile people that I need to meet. I'm making the t-shirts, but still representing my business. And so I'm trying to pitch people as they're in, in line to meet me. And, and and until I gave myself the time to like really feel through, which I ultimately did about the meeting the new people, like after the first couple of meetings went, went really well, I was just like in a groove. I was like, oh, we're going to crush it. And so some of that anxiety went away. But early on, I was fearful of, 
well, I've never met some of these people. You, 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 you know, David, the internet's a big place. There's definitely people on the internet that don't like me. They could be here. Like, what am I going to do if there's a scene like that? They, that's mental spinning. What I, what I forced myself to do ultimately with a lot of that was just feel it in my body as the event was going on. And ultimately a lot of that wasn't that big of a deal. And, and it's important to note that all of the burning of my hands happened very early in the event it, which is interesting because there was more light in the event because it was still daytime early on. So it shouldn't have been when I was getting the burns as it got darker and the event was it with the lighting was very dim. I didn't burn myself at all. And, and, and so we could say, well, that's because you got used to using the machine. You got used to using your space. But it was also because I was being really conscious of recognizing the anxiety in my body and letting that play itself out. And and. and and then as I talked to more and more people, I got more and more comfortable. I I got in my zone and and then I was in a zone. Um, the other thing there, sorry, John, is, is that you faced the problem. You faced the dragon. You didn't let yeah. it stop you from moving forward or, to, or being a part of whatever the challenge would be. Yeah. Right. So this goes on to, to, to say, I may play with fire in a special situation in my life. So, so you can see the play on words. Like, like anytime you have an injury, oh, burn. What is burn? Fire, hot. Like, like you can explore emotionally by just giving different ailments, a attaching adjectives to it. So this is, I may play with fire in a special situation in my life and, and I need to be more vigilant about whatever I say and do. So what is that? that that's me... Um, and, and of course, like, like I'm trying to fit my situation to this yeah. but, and, and I'm really trying to see, does this resonate at all? But, but it's a great springboard for thought because what did I learn from doing this event? Oh, I could plan it better next time. Now that I've done it, I, I, I don't have to fly by the seat so much. Like, like I know what the steps should be and I can be more prepared next time. So I don't have to be playing with fire. Um, then, yeah, I see, then it, I see it almost, yeah. oh, sorry, John, I see it almost as like akin to, to astrology for a lot of people, right? It's like, it, it's broad enough that you can just put yourself in, in the box. And that's kind of the, what the naysayers say. It's like, oh, it's just, it's just rubbish. Anyone can resonate with anything. Right. But that's kind of the point in, in a lot of reality. Like if the student finds the teacher when they're ready, you can learn from anything in the world and uh, whether or not the little blurb in the newspaper about astrology is so poignant to the, uh, the Aries person it's it's if if something calls you or it makes sense then why not let it make sense and uh here I, i've just uh, yeah anyway it just was sort of fleshing out yeah. the and, perspective and ultimately it's all about discernment because not everything in this is is going to resonate i'm going to skip over a lot of the rest because it gets into the manifestations of deeper level burns and what they mean mm -hmm. but what i love about this book is that they also include affirmations at the end to help you recognize how to get back into a state of optimal living. So for Burns, it's instead of seeing the only difficulties and problems of my life, I now accept to see love in each situation of my life. Love is everywhere, and I remain open to draw the lessons from my experiences. This is the normal integration process at the level of the heart. I can therefore heal my inner and outer injuries alike. And, and, and so, you know, it's like when you talk to a coach or, or when you go to a therapist or when you go to a friend, they're going to listen to what you have to say. They're going to give whatever feedback they give. And then you using your own spiritual discernment can decide which parts of that resonate. And this is a book to be used like an oracle in, in the same way where, where you're taking the parts that resonate as a way to unpack pockets of unconscious things that maybe you hadn't mentally identified, but that clearly resonate at an emotional level. Yeah, beautifully said. Uh, again, it's, it's your own opportunity, your own opportunity to explore, find meaning and to uh, move forward. Could you jump to accidents for me? You, you mentioned yeah. you were going to dive into accidents. Yeah, yeah. So under accident, uh, Jacques Martel says an accident, just as an injury occurs when my emotions are disturbed. It is quite synonymous with guilt or fear. It is related to my feelings of guilt, to my way of thinking and to how I function in society. It also denotes a certain reaction towards authority and even to several aspects of violence. I may sometimes have difficulty in asserting myself before this authority speaking of my needs, presenting my points of view. So 
I want to unpack this a little bit because any anytime it says, oh, you're having thoughts of violence, like this turns pe- a lot of people off, especially people who haven't done any shadow work. And that's why you end up having the accident. P- people who are unwilling to go to the darkest places of, of themselves and feel through that tend to be very accident prone people. And, and, and that's because the the energy of of that dark place that that they've compartmentalized off that they're not willing to go to has to go somewhere and so it manifests itself as accidents oftentimes and, and you know it's one of the things that i have somewhat of a qualm with like the positive thought movement be because positive thinking has a place it can be incredibly powerful but it's it's infinitely more powerful when you do the shadow work first and what is the shadow work it's contemplating what the worst case scenarios are and then feeling your feelings about that getting to a balanced place where you can see everything on the worst case spectrum and now you can truly choose a best case scenario because you've felt through all of that and as you do the shadow work which is feeling your your uncomfortable feelings and getting comfortable with discomfort you will become less accident prone it says an accident indicates a direct and immediate need to turn to action so th- this is unwilling to sit with my feelings i have to do action so, a- as a way to avoid what i'm feeling the need for a change of direction is so great that my thought uses an extreme, even a dramatic situation to make me aware that I must probably change the route I am currently following. So so it's that quote that from Abraham Hicks that we've said many times on, on this show. Well, if, if there's a problem that you don't want to deal with, don't worry, it'll get bigger. That's what an accident is. That's the problem getting bigger. What what does an accident do sometimes? It, it immobilizes you. What do you have to do when you're immobilized? You have to think about it. You have to reflect on it. You have to feel your feelings. So this is literally reality stopping you in your tracks so that you have to do the thing that you could have done before the accident to prevent it. It goes on to say, it's like a breakoff point in one aspect of my life, a point of no return, and not necessarily in, in my couple. It is a form of conscious or unconscious self-punishment. The body part injured during the accident is usually already ill or weakened, whether by a disease, an ailment, a cut, a burn, or any predisposition to accidents. The accident enables me to observe this weakness by bringing it to the surface. So what is this? This is like latent things under the surface that I've been refusing to to identify. You know, maybe I have bad digestion. Maybe my breathing is shallow. These are all more subtle things that if I don't pay attention to them, a lot of times in a more pronounced accident, quote unquote, will show up in my life in order to get me to reflect a little bit more deeply since I'm not tuned in to the subtle signals that are coming. It says an accident is also my inability to see myself and accept myself as I am. So this this is all the feelings that prevent me from being proud of who I am right now, from being present with myself. And and our discomfort presents us from having that that pride of self. As I am 100% responsible for my acts and my whole life, I can better explain to myself why I've attracted a specific form of accident on myself. So what is using this book as an oracle or a guide require? It requires absolute personal responsibility. Whatever happens in my life, whatever happens in my body is a manifestation that I created. So why did I create it? What what is the purpose that it serves? Because if you believe what Jacques Martel believes, which I do, all ailments are a signal. It's a bat signal saying, hey, we gave you so many subtle signals and you didn't pay attention to them. So now we have to give you this big one that smacks you right in the head so that you'll actually reflect on what's working and not working, what's optimal and non-optimal in your life. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the link of belief to me anyway. It's just that life is a mirror. You know, you get what you give from life and uh, as that sort of extends into simulation theory and even cynicism and and i, I guess us 
playing our own game. Of course, if if life is an entropy reduction system, I really love that frame of thought, by the way. Of course, it's going to push us, nudge us, give us signs to reduce ent- entropy in the macro, regardless of our own sort of standing. I was thinking about uh, like my relationship with football and I've, ha- I've got uh, typically very bad knees and I remember that my first uh, large knee surgery, I was getting these sort of knocks, knocks in my knee, knocks in my knee for, for a couple of months leading up to it. And then suddenly I'm, I'm out for a whole year, uh, massive operation. And in, in hindsight, yeah, there were the knocks there, but also it, the thing that came straight to me was my identity and my relationship with football. You know, before that extended period off, Football was was how I uh, I guess rated my own self esteem, my social standing, how I fit in, and in hindsight, I needed that break to better my own relationship with self, or to or to to see my relationship outside of of football, which is very interesting to me. Yeah. In hindsight, the other thing I wanted to really point out uh, regarding the the positive thought movement. Yeah, look, positive thoughts definitely uh, a better conscious choice than negative thought. Uh, but uh, as you mentioned in the at the start of the accident, uh, uh, sorry, explanation, it's that uh, it highlights. I think it was disturbed emotion. The, the mm-hmm. words emotions Correct. disturbed. Yeah, you know, it, the, how can you trust to have complete emotion if you're decompartmentalizing or running away from a part of yourself? You know, That's of course. Right. Of course, it's going to come up or create a misalignment or create the opportunity for accidents. You know, if some negative thought comes up, you're like, no, no, that's not me. That's not me. You know, you're no longer present. You're no longer acceptance of your whole self. Uh, And uh, uh, why uh, to sort of bring those two things together, that's why I love story so much. I think story is such a powerful powerful way to for us to see and to understand our own own lives you know in story trauma exists catalysms exist but it's always the the person that moves through things gets stronger from these things that ultimately find home find an ideal place of living uh it's not all uh good and rainbows and butterflies and frolicking through through the the field but man when those times happen because of the the growth that i've gone through it's just ever so beautiful well, and I was going to read knee ailments here in a second and see what, what yeah. Jacques Mar- Martel says about that, Be, because oftentimes injuries like this happen in our early life in, in order to get us to pay attention. Like for me, the catalyzing spiritual event in my life was a really bad back injury, and and, and that that forced me to be more reflective about my body and the signals that my body was giving me and 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 seek out alternative healing methods be it because the traditional medical system didn't have anything for me and and so then in that i gained an elevated consciousness about how a lot of these things connect and and so you you know I think one one thing that when it when I talk to people about yeah well you're responsible for whatever injury you have people don't like that be because it it makes them feel um like you're blaming them for for the injury and that's that's not really the way to take it the way to take it is actually like it, it's a source of empowerment the the universe is giving you vital information that you can use to live a better life and 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 when we recognize that all injuries can be overcome that 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 there's always a pathway to our desires we we can shed a lot of the ego stuff around oh it's my fault i'm i'm to blame you're blaming me like the whole concept of blame is such a low consciousness thing be, be because that's a misinterpretation it, it be, be because when we're present with what's happening we recognize that the only truth of this situation is that we just got data and then our job is to interpret that data towards optimal living so with knee ailments it says damage to the bones or the soft tissues is related to a deep inner conflict and involves at a deeper level the abandonment of my ego and my pride an ailment in my knees tells me about my difficulty in making a choice between my own individuality and that of a group it may be i in relation to my couple my family a circle of friends a religious social or political organization or both parts of myself, female and male. 
when the menisci are affected, I experience an inner duality that makes me nervous and tense. I often find myself caught in crossfire. I cling so tightly to something or someone or to what others may think of me that it prevents me from moving forward. The dislocation of knee shows me how off balance I feel with a person or situation, and my knee can no longer bear the weight of my body. Knees that give out show me how easily swayed I am and how little confidence and conviction I have. Whatever discomfort I experience in my knees, I ask myself before whom or what I feel I must abdicate. And and, and so, one, I'm curious if that resonates. And, and, and two, like, like this is such an interesting way to get information that, of course, we can discard if it doesn't resonate. But if it resonates, it gives us a rabbit hole to go down. Bloody Dr. Jacques. Hey. It, it, well, it, was, it was my meniscus and dislocation of the kneecap. And I just explained that my relationship with self and football and how much my ego and self-esteem was tied up in that part of, of life and the disposition between that and my own. I did, holy shit. That was, it gave me a, a few goosebumps. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. It resonated. It, it, it made so much sense in hindsight before I even knew what Dr. Martel's uh, explanation was it just fits so beautifully into into that uh yeah. i'm I kind of lost for words <laughs> yeah and and so again i'll I'll put the link in, in in the description for this book but the complete dictionary of ailments and diseases they, this goes into great detail about each of the diseases but if you want kind of like a surface level thing to um to reference there's another book that I don't see where it is on my bookshelf right right now, but um, it, I'll, I'll look it up here here in a second. Uh, I, again, just I, I love any frame of thought or any opportunity to look in the mirror to look at oneself is so valuable. You know, we we grow up, we create this relationship with the world, and uh, originally, as our naivety shatters we think that life's difficult and life's hard. And of course it is, but we ultimately couple that with it being not at the fault of our own, that we've been dealt this deck of cards or this hand of cards. And it's just unfortunate. It's too hard. Uh, yeah, no, definitely cut all this out, Benzie. I apologize. I was just trying to play with the victim mentality with different words, but I couldn't find them. <laughs> okay, so so the other book, if, if you just want like a, a surface level thing, is called Heal Your Body by Louise Hayes. And it, again, it, it is just a little index where you can look up um, different ailments and then Louise Hayes gives just like a one sentence thing of of what to think about when it, when it comes to that particular ailment. So whether you're looking for the deep dive that Jacques Martel has in the complete dictionary of ailments and diseases, or whether you just want a quick hit to to give yourself a direction to think in, Louise Hayes Heal Yourself is another great reference for figuring out what potentially might be under the surface emotionally when it comes to different ailments that you have. And my belief is, is that all ailments, no matter how slight or or big, you know, whether it's chapped lips or cancer, these are all signals that are showcasing to us some emotion that we are not feeling through that we are not acknowledging. And once we acknowledge and feel through the discomfort of that and transmute it back into creative potential, the physical disease or ailment no longer has to persist. Yeah. And, and down the other end of the spectrum, you know, if you, if you're still sitting there thinking, yeah, that that's complete bullshit or, or yeah, in some cases that's true. Absolutely. But in other times it's not, it's just the way the dice is the dice is rolled and, and I'm probably kind of in the middle of those two things in, in terms of my own sort of understanding. And as I, I come to this place, but ultimately any understanding that falls in line with, I am responsible for my reality makes a lot of sense to me. You know, as I take more responsibility in my reality down to how I think to how I behave and orient myself in the world, it shows me time and time again, that perhaps this is a simulation, perhaps that, I am controlling the ins and outs of what happens around me. And the, the, honestly, the continuing uh, I, uh, nature of how that is growing for me in my relationship with the world is really interesting. So anything that comes back to I am responsible makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, perhaps we could dive into really quickly, John, a couple of uh, ailments that we all sort of deal with. You mentioned chap lips a few times. I'd be curious to see 
what might pop up there and also just the cold like uh the the sniffles the the reason that we're in bed for a few days here and there maybe that's one that we could all resonate with and and see what it has to say yeah i'll, I'll look up chapped lips right now and and i did find some of the things that louise hay is, is talking about so so just to go through like, like a few cramps is, is tension fear gripping holding on um let's see if we can find lips on here so hers isn't as detailed so so lips isn't on here i wonder if dry skin is so dry eyes it equals like angry eyes refusing to see with love would rather die than forgive being spiteful um so sometimes with louise hay stuff because it's so short it, it's easier to figure out how to just use the language of, of something to kind of start to think about well what would that rec represent emotionally yeah. um le, like i i can remember working with somebody in, in an old business and they had conjunctivitis of the eyes and it was such an obvious emotional manifestation because the the root of conjunctivitis is anger and frustration at what you're looking at in life and their life was falling apart at the point but they were refusing to look at it refusing to acknowledge it refusing to feel through the discomfort so what happened they literally manifested conjunctivitis which is pus in the eyes that prevents you from seeing what's right in front of you and and so it's literally physically representing what you're doing emotionally um so if i if i look up lips We've got, I have dry lips when I feel great fatigue. So the reason I kept saying chapped lips is because when I came back from NFC, I was like, oh, this is so weird. I have chapped lips. I never have chapped lips. But I was fatigued. I didn't sleep for like the whole week because these parties went to like 4 or 5 a.m. every single night. And and even though I'm sober and not partying, like I'm still not sleeping. I'm I'm still not getting as, as much water as I normally get. I'm not going to the gym every day like I normally do. So my body was fatigued. Um, when I have muted fever, when I feel alone, when I'm worried, and when I regret having said certain words, these are all things that give us chap lips. So regretting saying certain words, like, what are the lips? The lips are what hold in certain things, me from saying certain things. So so anytime I have something with the tongue or the lips, it, 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 it's oftentimes reflecting like what am i saying what am i not saying what what am i projecting forward i no longer can share my emotions with others or with the person i share my life with the loss of joy will be all greater all the greater if my lips also go as far to bleed if my lips crack i may ask myself what division i have allowed to open up within me it may be a gulf that exists between my real world and my imaginary one i want to stay in my ivory tower for fear of being injured cracked lips may be found in a child whose parents are separated and who needs gentleness I make up a fantasy world of illusion that helps me escape my negative emotions, my ghosts who control my life. I make concessions and water down my demands, but I've had enough of all that. So, so dry lips are also like it's your body creating a callus over your lips as a protection mechanism, right? And, and so it's a physical mechan me mechanization of what's happening at the emotional level. When you're compartmentalizing your emotions, you're literally building a wall around them. So, so that's like an emotional callus that prevents you for, from having to do that. And, and, and so the lips are, are, are what have the opportunity to prevent us from expression because I, if I close my lips, Mm, mm, I can't express anymore. So chapped lips could be me preventing myself from saying the thing I need to say, for, from expressing the way that I need to express. And, and, and so you can see just by analyzing what do the lips do, le, le, like the, the lips are also how I express love, right? Like when I'm kissing so, someone. So, so then maybe I reflect, am I having an issue with a loved one? Like, like is there somebody that I want to be kissing? Is there somebody that that I'm in a a false romantic relationship with? Um, so all of these things can be just kind of ways to think about emotionally, like what might be happening in, in my life. And, and ultimately, we're using it to kind of sweep the emotional floor and figure out what might actually be going on in there. I'll look up cold now and, and maybe you can give some thoughts on <laughs> on on chapped libs. 
Yeah, absolutely. Again, uh, throughout all of this language, could be, might be, maybe, you know, like discernment, again, very, very important. And if you do have a repeating ailment, pretty good opportunity for you to look a little bit deeper and understand where that might be stemming from. You know, maybe chap lips is just because you spent the day on the beach and they got sunburned and of course they're going to crack. But uh, generally, if you're back in a routine and you're looking after them with a bit of chapo, they'll rectify themselves quite quickly. If it's persistent, then perhaps there's a little bit uh, something deeper there that you need to address, need to adhere to. And and I know that we all have a great opportunity to to look inward and to take more responsibility. The reason why I'm I'm keep harping on this today is I I took John Ray's advice. I know, look, he he has shared some pieces of advice in the past. You know, some I'm not a hundred percent sure I'll I'll stick to. I, I the the famous one is when someone calls the suicide hotline and John says, "Yeah, try killing yourself." Uh, <laughs> I, I couldn't help I didn't myself. tell them to but, try doing that, it. I, I I wanted I wanted them to feel empowered that yeah you could do that. You're a powerful enough was, person where you could do that. The sentiment was actually so bloody beautiful and amazing, and I believe that's in the simulation episode or the Bible episode. Definitely worth checking both of those out. It was it was actually really uh, a, a great thought experiment. Anyway, but I'm reading the book "Don't Do Shit That You Don't Want to Do" by Dr. Bob Bear, and it's a really really interesting book so far. I'm only four chapters in, but. The first few chapters are all about exploring your dependencies, your vices, the things that you lean on. And man, aren't these things are hitting in my face, you know? Uh, I've recently started six weeks of of sobriety and that includes no uh, coffee and nicotine. And oh man, I'm sure there's some ailments that, that are going to come to the surface that I'm interested in exploring. Uh, sorry, John. Yeah. <laughs> and and. You know, depending on how far you want to go with the this, Carl still still has a has a foot in both both worlds, and, and and so yes, you could practically interpret that you went to the beach, it was just a lot of sun, and that's why your lips were chapped. But if you take it one step deeper, why didn't you put sunscreen on? Why weren't you wearing a hat? Like the these are all emotional things that you chose not to do because of something that prevented you from having the obvious thought of how to protect yourself. So are you wanting to beat yourself up? Is, is that why you wanted your, your lips to, to be chapped like that? Do you not think that you deserve love? And, and, and so that's why you you have this callous chapped lip now, be, be because you don't deserve love? Of course, you could have easily made the choice to protect your lips, but you didn't. And 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 so exploring the emotional reason why you wouldn't protect your lips is wildly valuable. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Let's look at a head cold. So a cold is a viral in infection that causes coughing or a runny nose. The best known is acute rhinitis, commonly called a head cold. A cold also causes stiffness and fatigue, and the nose becomes obstructed. It is very widespread and contagious. As a germ or a virus is affecting my body, this indicates a failure of my immune system. It may result from a confusion in my thoughts or from the fact that I am frantically busy. Like, when do you get a cold when you're not present, when you're, when, when you're burning the candle at both ends? It is a total disorder, and my sensitivity is greatly affected. There are too many things to manage at the same time. I then wonder where I should start. I am stifling under family or work obligations. I feel cold, and therefore I catch cold, and a cold appears. The cold then brings me a respite during which I can protect myself from people for some time and keep my distances in order to gain contact with myself. How many times ha have you not liked going, you didn't want to go to school, you didn't go to want to go to work, you, you you were dreading like some project that that you had to go in or or, or you knew that it was going to be uncomfortable to go to work and then and then what happens as a kid oh you get sick on test day and and, and so then you don't have to go to school and, and and so you literally manifested an illness so that you wouldn't have to face the discomfort of what was actually happening in your life yeah the other call out for me was just the burning the candle at both ends you know like i, I am quite extroverted i, I love people and i love speaking to people but that it's it's become more evident to me and more uh i guess strong in my awareness that i need to make sure i 
create that space for myself that I do take time to reset, reflect. And so a couple of weeks ago, I got quite ill, quite sick. And I believe it was because I was overextending myself. I, I took that extra meeting. I had that extra call. I went to that extra appointment. I did that extra thing for a client, you know, and all of these things compounded to a point where, well, if you're not going to look after yourself, we're going to fucking make you look after yourself. Right. And uh, yeah, that that is has been a really interesting call out to me. You know, even even uh, in my function where I feel like I'm best with people, I still need to create that space and to make sure that I am, uh, well, yeah, serving myself first. Right. And what you learn, because for, I don't know, 10 years, I've been looking at every time I have an ailment, I look it up in this book. <laughs> what, what you learn at, after proving this to yourself that many times is that the solution is always presence. The solution is always feel your feelings. This The solution is always, if you create the space for you to feel the discomfort at a very subtle level, you'll never have to manifest feeling it at these larger levels. And and of course, people get sick, things things happen, but but recognizing that there is a signal there that that this is just bumpers on the bowling alley. It, it's allowing you to know where the center stripe is. It, looking at it that way means that you don't ever have to beat yourself up about it. You just recognize, oh, thank God the bumper was there because otherwise I would have gone further. And, 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 and so it, it is the rumble strip on the side of the highway that keeps you from going off the road. And, and you don't ever say, God damn it. I, that rumble strip is, is making too much noise. No, you go, thank God that was there. Or I would have <laughs> driven off the cliff. <laughs> God damn it. That rumble strip woke me up. <laughs> <laughs> I do like, I do like that analogy. You know, we are all orienting ourselves forwards and these just act as, as opportunities to redirect or to realign ourselves. You know, and we all have blind spots. We all have blind spots. It's, it's impossible to have unless you're the Buddha or you've found complete enlightenment. You know, we have blind spots and to use these things as a reorienting advice, I think is quite a good analogy. And and yeah, to again, John, the biggest takeaway through all of our time together, you know, I've always been so curious about purpose. Like, what is my purpose? What is my thing? How do I best contribute to the world? And uh, so you so beautifully put, well, if you think about purpose, to be present is to be on purpose. And right. that that truly sticks with me. And if I'm on purpose, I don't stub my toe. If I'm on purpose, I don't cut my knife, uh, my finger on a knife. If I'm on purpose, I don't burn my hands on the, the clothing iron. If I'm on purpose, I'm diligent about how I'm serving myself and don't burden the right. candle at both ends and get sick. Exactly. I've, I'm reading Rick Rubin's new book. Rick Rubin is one of the best music oh, producers of, of all bless. time. And, and he has a great book on creativity. And one of the things that he's talking about is how you do the creative act because and, and and the outcome that you're looking for is the joy of doing the creative act. The second that you think about how many al albums am, am I going to sell? How is this going to get distributed? The the second that you're thinking about future outcomes, you've ruined your chance at winning a Grammy <laughs> be, 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 because the, the creative act is purest and most beautiful when you're only doing it because it's so fun to do it in the moment. Oh, man, it's a good reminder for this. You know, I, I do think about the output of this or or how we uh how i best rock up for you but i know our best chats are when i'm just i'm in this just having a good bloody yarn and uh yeah i can't wait to read that book rick rubin man that that story about chop suey and that have do you know about the mm -hmm. chop suey story and the line in the middle oh he was working with system of a down and they had the the whole song mapped out except for this one bit in the middle and uh, they couldn't quite get the the right thing or the right words for it. And Rick uh, uh, went and grabbed a book off the shelf and handed it to the uh, head of System of the Down. And he opened to a random page. And the first sentence on this page of the book is now that whole middle bit of chop suey. And I'm not going to, I don't <laughs> read it word for word, but it, it was just perfect. And it fit in beautifully. And if you read the lyrics, it doesn't quite match the rest of the song's vibe. But in the song, it just sounds fucking beautiful and that yeah. just came from presence of mind and just this random calling to pick up a book right. from a shelf and and the reason that people hire rick rubin is for his creative discernment for for his ability to trust his own intuition rick rubin is not a musician and yet he's one of the most winning musical producers of all time and it's just crazy to think that that 
Why do people pay him if he's not a musician? They pay him because more than anyone, he trusts his gut and he knows what's going to make a great song. And I imagine a lot of that has to do with being on purpose, with being present, right. with being where your feet are. Yes. And so when you have blind spots, your body will be the first thing that gives you feedback showcasing exactly where those blind spots are. And so why do we sit with ourselves? Why do we feel our feelings? Because always you're going to manifest the discomfort of illness at an energetic and emotional level first. And if you can deal with it at that level, it never has to get to the point where it signals physically. And this is a, a hack for staying healthy and for staying aligned and for constantly being able to do more and more and more with less and less and less. What a good good place to, to wrap this up. Uh, I'm definitely ordering that book. I am so curious. I'm so curious. I think that'd be a really good book by Dr. Jacques Mattel. But again, if we missed anything, if I didn't push back enough on, on John's woo-woo way to see the world, uh, let us know. But John, thank you as always, mate. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, we'll see you on the next next one definitely if you do get this book or louise hayes book let us know what you think look up some of your past ailments let us know in the comments if it resonated and we'll see you all in the next one bye